Okay, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to set up HDR lighting using OSL nodes and using also the HDR light using the OSL light node. So uh, as you can see, the viewports and Max are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's very little difference between these two. Uh, it is not, there's no lights in the scene. It's being uh, lit currently right now with an HDR environment with an HDR and two HDR lights. The only real difference you're seeing here is saturation in the uh, skin tones. And that's because the viewport's not supporting the SSS shaders that are on the, uh, the head and the arms. So you can see they look a little washed out here, but they've uh, you know, picked up that rich richness of color um, here. So they, uh, they, you know, they look good in the final renders. So how have I lit this then if there's no lighting in the scene? Um, I'm just going to swap over to a perspective view and I'm going to uh, go ahead and turn off the safe frames with shift F. And so you can see I've got an HDR going in here and uh, it, everything looks nice and pretty. Um, now something to note, I'm in high quality mode. This is important. If you're not into high quality mode, it's going to not look high quality. It's going to look like this and it isn't going to be correct. So make sure you're always in the high quality mode and it will be correct then. So with that being said, let's look at what I've added in this environment. So I'm going to hit M and just open my material editor and I'm going to open uh, the uh, environment panel with eight on the keyboard. So eight and M and you'll see that in the environment panel, I have this HDR environment and that's this node here. So um, the way I created that was I right click materials, um, sorry, maps, OSL, environment, and we went to the HDR environment node and I went and picked uh, an HDR environment uh, that I wanted. Now Max ships with some of these and it has some that you've got, but of course there are websites that you can go to and download free HDRs um, and uh, you've, you've got sort of unlimited choices there. And that's what I'm using, and that's one from the uh, hdrihaven.com, uh, which is fantastic. So my kudos to those guys. They've done a great job of producing free uh, HDRs for us. So we've got this HDR map now loading. All we have to do is go ahead and load that into our environment, um, and it will switch over to that environment. Now, with that environment node, we've got lots of really nice options. You'll see if I orbit around this character now, you'll see she's floating off the ground. She's not touching the ground. However, you can see that she's actually been built standing on the grid, so she's actually standing on the ground here. So to be able to fix that, all we have to do is use um, ground projection, and you'll now notice that it allows us to be able to make it look like the character standing on the ground. Now, some maps won't work quite as well. You can see this bending that's kind of happening here. And we can change the height of that, um, the uh, tripod height. And so we can scale that up and down uh, to get it to the right point so that the ground looks like it is uh, scaled to the right size for the, the character, really. Um, you know, so you can push it up and down, but you'll notice that it starts distorting things. That's fine. We really just want it for the lighting. And when it comes to final renders, we may not want to see it at all, or even in the background. We can use custom background and get rid of the background and maybe just make the background a gray tone or something. But what you'll notice is the HDR is still working. Now that HDR is loaded um, and it has, you know, maybe it's not bright enough. We can push up the exposure control here and uh, expose it a little more so we can make it a little brighter if we like. Um, and uh, you'll see that now maybe it matches it a bit more, but, you know, it's brightening that background. So just use, uh, you know, custom background on so we're not looking at it. We can also rotate it around, which is nice. So you can see the lighting change across the surface as it goes around. So we can pick and choose where the main light sources is, are coming from. Now, this one that I have here is uh, has got, um, you know, a much more defined light directions. And so I'm going to place that back in. And you'll see that um, now one of the things I have is uh, a blurry background. It's an indoor environment with this nice strong lighting over from the sides, which is, a, you know, getting me some nice dynamic, you know, nice sort of more dramatic lighting uh, on the character. Okay. And a blurry background. So the way that's been done, again, I've found the rotation value that seems to work pretty good and, and rotate the, uh, um, you know, background. So it's getting the lighting the direction I want.
played with my exposure control here. I've also turned on blur background so it can blur out that background so it's not so distracting. Uh, you can change the samples here, but it only gets so good in the viewport. It looks a little pixelated, but when you render, it's perfect. And, you know, realistically, you may not want it back there at all when you render uh, and might want to uh, get rid of it entirely and just use the lighting from it. So you can be comping it, too, on top of, uh, you know, other backgrounds or whatever else. So these settings allow you to be able to control these things. Now, what I also have are lights in the scene. And to just to sort of illustrate that, you can see that I can change some lighting here. Um, I can grab lighting and you can see the lighting changing around the character. Now what I'm moving, uh, believe it or not, is a point helper. It's just a little point helper on the screen. And so how did that come about? How did I get that lighting going in there? So if you notice, we have this other HDR uh, I node and it's called HDRI lights. And so the way you do that, here's the one we are working with again. So I'll just plug that back in just so we're back to the one we're working with. Let's just go use custom background off. Um, and we have that set up now. I'm going to drag out from additional light. And we're going to go OSL, environment, HDRI lights, and pick that. And what you'll get is these HDRI light ones that come with Max. And you can probably find these elsewhere on the web too. Essentially, they're you know things like soft umbrellas and whatnot. So they're good for softer lighting. Harsher lighting, I tend to prefer just to go with uh, directional lights or something for outside if you want a sun or whatever and use an, uh, an Arnold uh, directional light. We'll go with the soft warm, for instance. And we'll drop this in. And when we select that, you can see we've got settings for it here. Now, what we have are a settings right here that are the position. So this is the position the light has been placed in. Well, who knows where that is? I mean, that's the thing. You really don't know where that is in the scene. So the ability to create point helper allows us to have a point helper. And you can see now where it's generated this point helper. And if I move that around, you're going to see lighting changing in the scene. So this is now affecting this number. So you don't have to sort of guess at this. You can use a point helper to set it. You can then delete that point helper, by the way, and it'll retain the values. Uh, but it'll help you figure out where that's going to go. You could also then, uh, you know, maybe pull some color. So maybe we want this light coming from over here. Um, I've got exposure tint. I'm going to use the color picker and, and pick a bit of that color coming off of it. Okay, off the, you know, pointing from that direction. And again, we could now use, uh, you know, exposure tint and other settings to be able to manipulate this light. So there is actually no um, light per se in in the max viewport right now it's just this uh, point helper that's representing a position for uh, an hdr light now that hdr light you might say i want multiple add light you can add another one and in this case it added an umbrella and i can say create point helper again and i'm going to go maybe stick this over for uh, a rim light uh, on the other side of the character or whatever and again same thing i could go and pick colors and be, be able to manipulate the output of that and you'll see it's casting green onto the back of the character now which looks pretty ugly so in here, again, I have uh, two lights and I've got two point helpers running on those. And so you can see that I have them um, there and on the other side. So we could easily just increase the size of that point helper and the size of that point helper. And you can see now what I'm getting is, is reflective light. And again, I've picked the colors from back here to kind of bounce the light. And I've got colors from our light source up here, sort of yellowy tones to be able to uh, make it look like it's, um, you know, uh, you know, the sunlight coming through. So there you, there you go. There's how to set up HDR um, environment and an HDR light, um, you know, set up without using any lights in your scene whatsoever to light your character that looks almost identical to the actual rendered uh, solution.